Christine Eber is a longtime WARP member. She is an author and anthropologist who collaborates with Maya women and their families in Chiapas, Mexico. She is a founding member of Weaving for Justice, a volunteer group that assists women weaving cooperatives in Chiapas to sell their products through fair trade. So Christine, welcome, and uh, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Kelsey. And I was really inspired by the previous panelists and want to thank them for all their hard work with their students last year. In the brief time I have with you today, I want to update you on the work of Weaving for Justice with Maya Weavers and Cooperatives in Chiapas, Mexico. I'm going to go at this a little differently than I usually do. I'm going to approach it through my writing. Writing has been the other way as an anthropologist that I've been trying to build bridges between Maya women and their families and um, people of other countries, including our own. Specifically, I'd like to share with you my writing in three areas, on Instagram texts, on monthly email updates to our followers and members, and um, a novel I wrote a couple of years ago that was recently released in Spanish this year. Deb Chandler suggested that I, I share that with you and I'm, I'm grateful to do that. First, Instagram. I wasn't familiar with Instagram um, before March 2020. One of our members of our steering committee, we have 10 volunteer women in that group, Megan had had an Instagram account for us, but I didn't really engage with her on it. And she had been posting over the last five years or so from time to time on her own accord. I was pretty alienated from social media altogether, I think. And I still am to some extent, but I actually fell in love with Instagram this year. I'm sure I approach it a lot differently, but I um, don't get a feed on my phone. I go to my computer where I see the posts, three of them across like a gallery, and I can scroll through them and get a sense of the history of the work of Weaving for Justice over the years. Uh, most of my writing has been in those text boxes to go with images of the weavers, of their weavings, and of um, social movement um, posts that we have put up, for example, of the dreamers and of asylum seekers and refugees of the Black Lives Matter movement. I have also been writing a good deal on our monthly emails. Um, we have about 100,600 people that receive those emails. And if any of you would like to be on it, I have a slide at the end of my presentation with my contact info. You can just email me and we'll put you on it. We just send one email a month. This, um, the subject line of our email is solidarity in the time of COVID-19 and the month and the year. We're now into year 2021, whereas we had started in March, 2020 to do this. Our mission, as well as um, connecting people to the weavers and helping sell their textiles on Instagram, has been to um, educate people about their lives and to link their struggles with those of people here in our country. As the tumultuous events um, came upon us last year, we um, felt especially obliged to connect people and show solidarity and understanding. We posted a lot of images of, of Black Lives Matter, as I mentioned, we also posted images, photos of people who passed on from COVID-19. Some of them researchers working with textile artists in Chiapas or anthropologists or friends. And when people uh, renewed their memberships with us, we offered them the opportunity to send us a photo and we would post on Instagram, a remembrance of their loved one. For me, and I, I think for Megan, who has been really busy on this project, Instagram has really been a fruitful way for us to connect with people and build understanding between diverse groups of people. And I'm happy to say along the way, we've sold a lot of textiles. We've sold more last year than in any year that since we've been working with the Weavers and that's since the late eighties when I began. Leading up to the holidays, we posted a, a good deal and we've been recently posting many less because we were able to open up our showroom again, our store space, um, which is open one day a month on a Saturday, the third Saturday. We opened it in May and now again today, our third Saturday. I'm regretting that I have to leave this meeting as it's been so interesting so far because I have to go back to the store after I'm done, but I'm so glad I could be with you. 
Um, so we're getting a little bit more balanced, we volunteers, back into our lives, not posting quite as much um, to sell. But we want to keep doing that as well. Now, a few words about the Spanish version of my novel. It's called When a Woman Rises, the Spanish title, Cuando una mujer se levanta. Much of my nonfiction writing as an anthropologist has been translated into Spanish, and I've tried to get it into the hands of students and um, colleagues in Mexico, but it hasn't been writing that is accessible to my Maya women friends and their families. They don't have a tradition of reading. Um, maybe the Bible is the only book in their homes. They haven't been able to, many to go on in school past sixth grade and have a very elementary level of reading, and they have no money to buy books. So after writing When a Woman Rises, I realized that my novel was being about a friendship between two Maya women was a story that was accessible to them in a language, even though it was still in English, and many of them obviously don't even read Spanish, but I hoped people could in their family might read it to them in Spanish. But I knew that it was a topic uh, that had themes that they could really relate to. The book is the story of a friendship between Lucia and Magdalena two Sotzil-speaking Maya women from Chenelo Chiapas, where I, I had originally come to do my PhD research in the 80s. I, Lucia is a healer in this story and heals with herbs and prayer. Magdalena is a weaver and a mother and, um, and, a, and a wife, following more in the footsteps of her mother. I wanted um, to try to get free copies of this novel into the hands and the homes of my my friends, as well as all the indigenous peoples called, who call themselves the original peoples of that area in Mexico. I hope through this project to challenge in a very small way, the legacy of colonialism that has made so many original peoples feel so disrespected, forgotten and um, neglected. For my Maya, for the Maya readers of my book, I, I hope that it holds up a mirror to them to let them see through the eyes of someone who has admired them and learned so much from them, how, how they are, and maybe raise some of their awareness of what value their lives and their work has. I also wanted to remind them of a creative spark that we all carry within us and to encourage them to bring that out in whatever way they could. I'm deeply grateful to the 125 generous donors on GoFundMe who helped me get 2000 copies printed in Highland Chiapas they were printed last April and are in a printing shop in San Cristobal de las Casas, where people can come and receive their copies, their free copies and organization leaders have come there to pick up large quantities to take to their groups. As you can imagine, it's been hard for the books to reach the hands of many Maya people. I, I wanted to show um, you a few photos at the end of my presentation here. The first one is of one group of weavers Sobol and Zetik, Women United, that are holding up their copies here. This is the group I've personally been working with the longest since the 80s. Um, I had fun with Claudia, who's in the pink um, sweater on the right, following her on WhatsApp around San Cristobal to locate the print shop where she could go and pick up the books. Some of you may, may remember Claudia. Those of you who went to the Oaxaca meeting, Claudia and Celia came with me from Chiapas and they sold their textiles as well as attended the tours and meetings and, and they learned so much. I, um, they are here in their meeting house in this photo and I have been so happy um, to talk recently to Stephanie Schneiderman, who many of you know, a WARP member, who is, is going to be leading a tour next March, a, a textile tour of Highland Chiapas. And she says that she will go to visit the women. They are in their meeting house every Wednesday and the directions to the meeting house are on the website of Weaving for Justice, if any of you find yourself in the area and want to visit. The second photo is of Yuli, and Yuli is the youngest health promoter in an organization called Madre Tierra Mexico. And Helena, the organizer, of, or one of the organizers, picked up a 200 copies, I believe, or possibly 100, <laughs> I can't remember, but she was able to deliver them to many organizers, health promoters. And in this particular case, I believe Yuli and her mother were evicted from their home and were staying temporarily in the headquarters of the office. And um, here Yuli is reading the book. 
Helena also sent me another photo of health promoters, adult ones, reading, uh, holding the book. And she told me something that was music to my ears. She said that they were reading it together in a circle and a few of them piped up, well, if Lucia and Magdalena can tell their stories, why can't we tell ours? And she said, they began to write their stories, people who had never written before. So I was deeply rewarded to hear that. <laughs> I'm working on getting free copies also to Guatemala, to Antigua, to an institution called CIRMA, where I will um, let people know that they can get their free copies once they're there. I'm hoping weavers in Guatemala might be able to receive some as well. Both the English and the Spanish edition are also available for um, on the internet for purchase if you'd like to purchase one. I'd like to conclude by mentioning an exhibit that we are putting together with the New Mexico State University Museum here in Las Cruces. It will be up in August for a year. And with the help of a generous donor, we've been able to commission a wipil from the women of Sobolantic from a neighboring township of Magdalenas that they will be working on this year. And we will have photographs um, showing people who come to the exhibit the progress of this wipil. It was probably take us a good, it will take the weaver who's gonna do it, Juana Maria, about six months to weave. Then we'll have the unveiling next year and our grand opening. We have um, some limitations here on how many people can come to our our museum, but we will be open in the fall. Um, I um, hope we will have a digital tour as well that I can let the work members know about. I just will say one last thing before closing. For those of you who have been following the plight of asylum seekers and refugees, that's been a very great preoccupation to us here on the border of Mexico. I did write a novel about the experiences of many volunteers like myself working with asylum seekers who were here in the year of 2019 before they were all being returned to Mexico. And I don't know if that, when that book will come out, it's being reviewed by a press right now and I'm hoping they'll accept it. But I'm happy to um, let you know when that's available and to correspond with you through email. Um, I think um, Kelsey's gonna put up a slide now with my contact information. And I just wanna thank every one of you for all the good work you are doing in the world with Weavers and in weaving and um, have been really, really enjoyed being with you today. So I'm gonna leave you now and go back to our weaving sale. <laughs> Take care, bye-bye. Christine, thank you so much for that. That was wonderful. And we will also put this information from this slide um, into the chat so that people can contact you directly. Um, and I just have one question that maybe it would be a quick one to answer. Um, Norma's asking, where is the store located? Is it a storefront or online? It, um, we do have an online store on our website, but we have an actual store. We do have appointments, but we're only open on the third Saturday of the month. It's in Las Cruces, New Mexico, um, 525 East Loman Avenue, upstairs, and not the greatest for some of our older friends who have trouble walking upstairs, <laughs> but <laughs> we're hoping more will come today and as people are starting to get out of their houses and go out and support worthy causes. But we, um, we could do a digital tour for you if you wanted to see what we have at the store. We're trying to help people um, in any way we can connect with these weavers and support them through your purchases. Wonderful, so, thank you so much, Christine. And maybe because I know we have a, a couple of uh, members here who, are, who live in New Mexico, maybe if you enter the actual address into the chat, um and then um and then people will also put your contact information so people can contact you directly okay, sure thank you so much Kelsey, and everybody thank <laughs> Bye -bye. you for being here